This portion of the news brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. Well, one of the country's largest commercial banks expected to undergo major job cuts worldwide, which could impact local operations. Now, the decision to cut staff at Scotiabank was made after the bank recently posted a decline in profits. Arkland Watson joins us live in studio tonight with the latest on this breaking story. Hello, Clint. Keisha Candino, good evening. Scotiabank today announced more cuts that will lead to the downsizing of the bank, affecting employees at all levels of the organization internationally. Included in this will be the closure of about 120 branches in its international division. Canada's third largest bank will shed some 1,500 jobs, some 500 of those jobs expected to be in the Caribbean, Latin American and Mexican markets where acquisitions have led to duplications. Now the latest restructuring included $109 million worth of loan losses in the Caribbean business. Loans based on tourism investments slow to recover from the recent recession. The move will cut the bank's fourth quarter profits by $341 million, but it will save about $120 million a year in annual operating expenses. Scotiabank's president and chief executive officer Brian Porter said today's announcement is a result of making some difficult but necessary decisions to support their long-term goals. Now, in a statement released just moments ago, the bank gave little specifics regarding how the local branches would be impacted, saying only that Scotiabank's recent global announcement is about enhancing service to customers while reducing structural costs. The statement also confirmed that as a result of acquisitions in the past, there have been a duplication of services throughout the footprint for which a review is underway. Now, as for branch closures, the statement said the bank is still undergoing a review, but said any action taken will be carefully planned with consideration given to all affected stakeholders, including employees and customers. Scotiabank Bahamas Limited says it remains committed to treating employees fairly, equitably, and with respect over the coming months, they will continue to provide employees and customers with information. Now, Candino and Keisha, the announcement raises some concerns that other banks may follow suit as they head into the first quarter of the next fiscal year, which began November 1. We already know CIBC First Caribbean continues its downsizing exercise, offering packages to employees as part of a se special separation exercise. The latest group of employees disengaged from that company were let go last Friday. RBC Royal Bank is also in the middle of reorganizing its operations in the country. So Keisha Lickin, you know, certainly something to watch and to monitor as we see the, uh, the financial situation and the financial sector going through major changes here locally and internationally. Back to you. Thanks a lot, Clint. Well, the nation's leader making another big step in his quest to secure funding for the Bahamas Agriculture and Marine Sciences Institute, BAMSI, making good on a promise he made to investors during a trip to New York back in July. Well, Prime Minister the Right Honorable Perry Christie visited the prestigious group of wealthy fly fishermen who for more than two decades have made Cargo Creek Central Andros a part of their calendar. As we hear in this report from our Clint Watson, it was the right move that could close the deal on major economic opportunities for the big yard. During our conversations in New York, you led me to understand the significant contributions that people like you make to the well-being of people like the Leedens. The newly formed relationship was made possible through BAMC's partner, the University of Miami, who has put the government in touch with potential investors in agriculture. It was based on this arrangement the Prime Minister made during his visit to New York where he made a pitch to the recreational fishermen and businessmen that Andrews was the place to invest since they had been going there for decades and have contributed to the multi-million dollar bone fishing industry that sustains residents on the island. In the presence of local residents who benefit from the industry, Mr. Christie informed the group of fishermen about his vision for the island and their potential involvement as investors to advance its economy, place it properly as a major contributor to the economy of the Bahamas mm -hmm. through economic activity, and therefore give the people of the island, not just the hope, mm -hmm. but economic activity that they themselves right. can become the owners, the entrepreneurs on the island, as the Leedens are doing here and as others are doing. Fisherman Bev Landstreet, he says they are excited about the potential of Andros and having a major research facility is something they welcome. The research facility they're creating here, the, the BAMSI, is very exciting. 
from everything from agriculture to, to uh, fisheries to, to, you know, who knows what the research could do. But, it, but you've really needed that, and we've thought about that for a while and thought about that with the University of Miami. It's a great, a great opportunity. University of Miami's professor, Dr. Jerry Alt, says securing funding for BAMSI is a process, but the prime minister's presence in Cargill Creek has made that process much easier. It's going well. It's very exciting. I, I, you know, I think we're encouraged on all sides about where we're at. Captain Sean Leiden, who owns the lodge, is happy to see the kind of support government is giving to securing investors who can play a greater role in a product they've enjoyed for years. He says the potential of this industry is enormous, something they've experienced firsthand. Every stakeholder that's within this industry benefits. So it's, a, it's in a wide way of, on a cross spectrum of different um, businesses that, that benefits from it. Because not only do they come stay here, they spend money elsewhere throughout the, the, um, the, the communities. And if you're wondering how the Prime Minister's visit was perceived, well, Professor Alt puts it this way. Big is the, you know, the bottom line on this. Folks are uh, duly impressed that a man of that uh, power and prestige can spend the time to come talk about things that are important to him and his country. So I think it had a huge impact on the people there. In Cargo Creek Andros, Clint Watson, ZNS Network News. The referendum designed to bring equality to men and women in law was previously scheduled to take place today, but the poll has been put off indefinitely as the government seeks to deepen understanding about the four questions which will, if passed, amend the Constitution. The bills were not voted on in Parliament after leader of government business in the House of Assembly, Dr. Bernard Nottage, concluded that several members of the opposition were not in support of the bills. There were also concerns by sectors of the public about some of the areas of the questions covered. Last month, Dr. Nottage told Parliament that the bill will be revisited when Parliament returns from its break on November 19th. Meantime, a public education initiative is ongoing. This portion of the news was brought to you by McDonald's.